Let's welcome in Brett Good to the conversation. Brett, we were talking about the All SEC teams earlier, and uh, didn't really have a problem with much on the list. But uh, you look at Jalen Catalan statistics; they were far superior than Stanley Junior, uh, Richard LeCount, um, Patrick Sertain, and I think it's Elam is the other guy. You were a teammate of Darren McFadden's. We know that he got gypped out of at least one Heisman Trophy. You think Arkansas gets a fair shot when it comes to awards and team selections over the years? I, I don't think so, and and it's sad because you know what, what Darren did the entire time. They're like, well, you can't win it here. You can't, you know, you're not going to be able to do it in this place. But it, there's a lot of you know voting that goes along even with like the Pro Bowl and the NFL. Where they say like a guy is you know he's a pro bowler he leads he leads the whole NFL this year in touchdowns at his position but he's not going to the pro bowl but the, but what that means is he's probably going to go next year and so like for some of these guys you know if they're a senior they're, that doesn't matter doesn't help them out but then the next year they go into you know they got to have another good year and then they're going to get recognition a little bit but it, the voting system is definitely a l- little different in my opinion. Yeah. It's got to be really frustrating um, with several of your teammates, whether in college or the NFL. And it, like the Packers, it, it, you played on uh, what I would equate to two separate brands. Like the Razorback brand in college football is not as strong as the Packers brand in the NFL. So I'll ask you this. Do you feel like some of your teammates on the Green Bay Packers got awards, got in the Pro Bowl selections, maybe not based on merit, based on the jersey they were wearing to kind of flip it up on you? It 100% does, and that's what happens is the voting, okay, it's like this year when I said leading the touchdown, uh, Tanyan, is, is that he leads the league for touchdowns from a tight end this year. He mm-hmm. didn't get a Pro Bowl. But, you know, so it's a popular vote. It's, it's who, which everybody says, oh, this guy's great. I remember when Jordy Nelson, you know, he was leading the league and doing a bunch of stuff, being there, and then nobody voted for him. And then the next year all of a sudden he starts getting votes and he didn't have as good as a year because people start recognizing you and they're like, oh, I want that jersey and, then that's when the people get online and they start voting. Yeah, and yeah. Dude, to your point about Tanya, Evan Ingram, who's been my fantasy tight end this year, who has not been good, Brett, got in. Evan Ingram over Tanya, who is the leading tight end in the NFL with touchdowns, doesn't make a lick of sense, man. Yeah. No, no, and that's what, I mean, it's a popularity. You know, the quarterbacks usually are kind of close because um, all the quarterbacks are favored if, you, if they're out there scoring points, but... Um, I've always joked with like Mason. I don't know if there's ever been a, a pro bowler come from the, you know, from the, the mid south, like where we're at up there in Green Bay or, you know, the NFC North because the weather gets so bad. And so they, you know, but Mason's had a great year, but he doesn't get the vote. So it's just, a, it's a popularity contest and it's all about, you know, the numbers. Speaking of that, we're really good uh, at online uh, voting and stuffing the ballot box when it's an online vote here in Arkansas. Trey Flowers. Perfect. Trey Flowers, former Razorback, is nominated for um, the Walter Payton Man of the Year. And if you just retweet, I guess what it says here, one retweet equals one vote. So you can go find Trey Flowers on Twitter and retweet that and you can vote. So how big a deal in the locker room and in the NFL circles is the Walter pa- Payton Man of the Year um, award? Is that is that a big deal amongst the players? Yeah, it's a huge honor because, you know, it's the, it's the recognition, obviously, the name, Walter Payton, it, you know, it, it still is, carries a, a big load of, you know, so much respect that everybody has across the board. Um, this year, unfortunately, you know, obviously, they're, they're not going to the, these banquets and doing all these things with with COVID. And that one, and then, and then there's Ed Block Kerr's award um, that comes back. You know, the NFL Comeback Player of the Year is, is also big, but, you know, the Walter Payton Award is, just shows what you've done in the community and what type of person that you are. And that's a, you know, it's a great honor if you're able to, you know, to go out there and, and officially win it. And then you get to win, you know, uh, you get to wear the little badge, you know, throughout your career. So it, it's a very prestigious award. What's the biggest award you're most proud of in your esteemed career that you've got? Well, I mean, does the Super Bowl count? I mean, I did make SEC honor roll um, when I was back counts. in 2004. I guess. Did uh, you? When I was going to, you know, going to class every day. <laughs> so, uh, I, I mean, I'm going to say the Super Bowl. I and thought it'd be you like, know, you know, the SEC West Championship. All right. So now, now, Brad, I, I got to ask you this: Did you not get an award with you when you and Aaron Rodgers did that that karaoke event? I, and I can't remember, <laughs> but did, did did you not get an award from the Packers fans or that bar for that one excursion? We got, you know, they they paid for our drinks. 
That's an award. That's an award in itself, man. That probably was pretty yeah. pricey knowing your bar tab. Oh, so. um, I, I, it was a little pricey. <laughs> I, I, I can picture. I, now I don't. I don't know if you ever made your way to Milwaukee for Bucks games, but I know when uh, Bakari and some of the other uh, great offensive linemen for the Packers went down, they were just chugging beers one after another. I, I could see you having a a pretty uh, good success rate if it came to a beer chugging competition, Brett. I think you'd have an award or two if you competed there. Uh, it, it is. His name is David Bakhtiari, not Bakari. You got, you got to get his, his him down. He, he's an awesome guy, and he can chug beers, but I can compete with him. Uh, you know, the hardest thing about beer chugging is you, I, I can't do it out of a can, but I can do it out of a glass. Yeah. Um, so we, we had some fun with that. Luckily, there wasn't as many uh, photos back early in my career as there, as there are now. So It's about, breath- uh, it's about breathing and rhythm. In my career. Right, you get the breathing and the rhythm right. So Has Exactly, that's all it is. You can get it down quick and you're good to go. Yeah. So. Brett, when it comes to this football team, and you got to play in a couple bowl games in your career, um, just the the bowl practices leading up to the TCU game in the Texas Bowl. Uh, go back to your career at Arkansas. How important were those practices for your career, and just the just your teammates and the camaraderie that you were building to try and close out the season strong? Well, the, for the practices, I think they're huge. Um, and, in our careers, you know, the, the, everybody before this year, I think they were very important. But I think this year, more than ever, I think they're probably the most important because we didn't have a spring football. That, you know, training camp was was weird and different. So now you've got a lot of guys that are on the bubble of, you know, could be moving up to starters next year or whatever. And so they need these extra practices before they head into spring ball and then in the summer. And then you've got the guys that are on the, you know, that they're waiting on whether they're going to try to come back or the guys are, this is it for them. And and it's huge for the guys that have put all the, you know, blood, sweat, and tears on this program for us over the years, and they haven't had much success. Now they've kind of been rewarded a little bit. And so for them, I, I feel great that they can go out there and they can, you know, get another you know couple weeks in before this game happens and, and just to be able to enjoy it with their teammates and their brothers out there, and that, that's big for them. Yeah, and I don't know how Pittman will – ultimately set the schedule up that you normally end the season you know end of november you find out your bowl assignment you might have a week or two off finals then you, you crank up some some bowl practices coaches are finishing up recruiting they got the early signing period you go play the bowl game you come back you got another week or two then you start off season you do that for eight weeks then you start spring practice uh, you've played the season all the way up into uh mid to late november or mid to late december uh, you practiced all the way from August to the start of the season in September. Um, now you're going to play this bowl game. You might have a week, 10 days or whatever. I don't know how how they're going to handle the start of off season, but I would assume they'll roll right into that mid-January spring practice. Point is, these players are not going to have a lot of time away from football uh, between now and the end of spring practice. No, they don't. And that's what it, you know. The, a lot of people start kind of saying they get burned out on it when it comes to when you get to a bowl game and then, you know, you, you turn around and it's all starting a new deal. But that's the way football is. I mean, it's a year-round sport. It's off-season starts. But, you know, when they, when they turn around they start building up in the, weight, in the weight room, it's like starting all over. You don't even compare to where you, you left off at the season. Right now their bodies are so broken down, they're just kind of maintaining. And so they'll let their bodies heal for a couple of weeks and then they'll get back in the weight room and it's, you know, it's day one again. for It's like a whole new program. And so – uh, that's the way you treat it, and, and you got to understand that a lot of these guys are still young, and their bodies are they recover a lot quicker. Um, so they're able to go out there and, and, and compete. And, and the way Coach Pittman's done it so far, I, I don't doubt that he'll take care of them, and it's not going to be a strenuous uh, spring practice. We're hoping we even have spring practices, which I'm assuming they will this year because of what we know. Uh, and so I, I think that we're going to learn a lot um, to, to how he runs the program. This will be our first time getting to see it. I know that Christmas, uh, we'll, we'll wind down with this, Christmas is about the NBA, and there'll be five big NBA games, and that's kind of their holiday, but it's also kind of the mark of, uh, hey, the, the end of the NFL regular season and the playoffs are just around the corner. So it's an exciting time of the year for your sport in the NFL, and uh, I know that this year with the wild card playoff, the wild card round being a little bit different, um, it's going to be a fun time to watch those wild card games coming up. It is, and I love Wild Card Weekend. You know, they added the extra extra playoff game with you know only the number one seed getting. So I'm hoping that the Packers can hold on, and we'll we'll find out this week. They've got to play the Titans. They hadn't stopped a run a whole lot. Uh, you know, the Chiefs. The, y'all leave what they've done. I think what eight and zero on the road is the first time that's ever been done. 
Um, and that, that's phenomenal to be able to, to accomplish that. And sometimes it looks like they're bored out there how good they're winning. So um, what, it, what it's come down to is, you know, who, who's going to be hot at the right time. And, I, and, and it's going to be very interesting. we got two weeks left. And I tell you what, I got to play on Christmas Day one time, and it was phenomenal. It's an awesome experience. So it's, uh, you don't even have to deal with anything except going to play football. So it's, it's a fun time of year where – you can just watch football, sit back, and relax. All right. Well, we've enjoyed our chats, and we look forward to them in uh, in the next year. And we'll visit next week, getting ready for the bowl game. It's brought to you by Henderson Phillips Employer Solutions. That's where Brett works now, and he's part of the winning team there. Employee benefits, health insurance, staffing management solutions. If you're the person in your office that deals with the health insurance plans or the retirement plans, employee benefit plans. Brett would love to sit down and review those with you for the coming year. Also, commercial and personal insurance. Brett, you handle all of that. You'd love to uh, visit about anyone's 2021 needs when it comes to all of those items. Absolutely. All those items, I'm still working today. We're we're able to get anything done that you need. Uh, We're able to kind of just handle it all. And uh, we've got a lot of life insurance that people are kind of putting in as little stocking stuffers in the meantime, to protect our family. So we'll just give me a shout uh, whenever you get a chance. All right, here's Brett's cell phone number, so you can call or text directly, 479-651-2292. That's 651-2292 uh, to get a hold of Brett and talk about any of those needs. Merry Christmas, buddy, and uh, we'll talk next week. Merry Christmas, fellas.